we got some Chiefs OTAs, winners and losers that we're going to talk about here on today's show. But first, spread the word. Share this video on Facebook. All you got to do is click the share icon, then the Facebook icon, then post to your page. Share this with all of your friends on the Internet. Want to get the Chiefs report out there to everybody out there, especially today's show as we have some OTAs analysis. So share this video and we'll see you out there. You're watching the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I am Harrison Graham. We got some Chiefs OTAs winners and losers to discuss. Two weeks of OTAs in the books. We got one more to look at next week. We'll have some final OTAs winners and losers then. But let's focus on week two. And uh, let's start with undrafted free agent running back Daenerik Prince, who we talked about this when they signed him after the NFL draft. Us here at Chat Sports, we had a draftable grade for Prince, sixth, seventh round grade, and they were able to sign him, so I was a big fan of that. And uh, Dave Tobe, the special teams coordinator, has uh, been impressed as well, not only as a running back, but uh, as a potential special teamer. He says he's looking good. He reminds me so much of Niall Davis, for those who remember. Niall Davis was a great kick returner in Kansas City, kind of a rotation back as well. I said it then, I'll say it now. I think Daneric Prince makes this team for a couple reasons. One, I think Clyde Edwards-Alaire, there's still a real chance he's not on this roster. So if he gets moved, Prince is your third running back behind Pacheco and McKinnon. And even if CEH is here, they may opt to carry four backs. That is definitely a possibility uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I think his chances of making this team are real. And if he can have an impact on special teams, that's only going to help his chances out. Like that's really where he needs to focus here as a rookie is how can I contribute on special teams as a return specialist, as a gunner on punt uh, team, whatever the case may be. If he can have an impact in those areas and Dave Tobe vouches for him, good chance he's going to make the 53-man roster. Another Chiefs OTA winner for the second straight week. Congratulations to one Justin Ross, the second-year receiver out of Clemson. And look, the kid is healthy, and he is making plays. Uh, we talked about it on Thursday's video, but we'll just mention it again here. If you missed it, the Chiefs posted a clip of Mahomes hitting him on a deep pass down the sideline and where he was able to haul in about a 50-yard touchdown. He reportedly had a nice contested catch on Thursday as well. He just looks smooth. Like, you can tell he's healthy. He's fluid again. Now, they're not taking hits right now. Like, how is his body going to hold up if he takes a hit? I mean, he's got a fused spine. Like, that's nothing to joke about. Like, that's, that's a very serious deal. Uh, but if he's working mostly the boundary, he should avoid those hits. Maybe they don't put him in harm's way where he's having to go over the middle of the field. That'll obviously limit his... Uh, maximum capability of being a you know full big time receiver in the NFL uh, if he if they don't put him over the middle so they'll probably have to test that eventually but he's had a hell of a journey and you got to respect him uh, getting back and uh, being healthy here I mean he had that phenom phenom freshman year we had a thousand yard season for that national championship team at Clemson good second year 865 yards dipped a bit that season but still solid did not play in 2020, had that neck spine injury where he uh, had that fusion surgery. Uh, came back the next year, played okay, uh, 514 yards. Some of that was he just didn't look the same, and uh, obviously Trevor Lawrence had moved on. DJ Uyunglele, the quarterback that took over at Clemson for that season, just wasn't that good, to be honest. Uh, last year, didn't get drafted, undrafted free agent there, did not end up playing. They put him on season-ending IR with a foot injury, but now he appears to be healthy, and you wonder, could he make this roster? Like, does he have a chance in a crowded wide receiver room? What do you guys think? Are you buying the Justin Ross hype? Be real with me. Type B for buy, you are. Type S for sell, you are not. Pen comment on today's video. B for buy, S for sell. Are you buying into the hype around one Justin Ross? Matt Bushman is up next, uh, preseason legend Matt Bushman, the tight end. Uh, I believe we talked about him last week as well as an OTA winner. I can't remember if we did. We definitely talked about him a little bit on a video at some point, but he just keeps making plays. Uh, reporters with boots on the ground keep mentioning him as a guy who's making plays as a pass-catching option, and he's taking advantage of some absences from other tight ends. Travis Kelsey's missed some time. Blake Bell's missed some time. So he's taking advantage of those reps and doing some things, and we talked about it last week. Andy Reid said that the Chiefs could carry an extra tight end instead of a fullback because as of now they don't have a fullback on the roster with Noah Gray expected to handle some of those fullback duties. 
threes, and that could open the door for Matt Bushman to make this team. And if you remember in that preseason game against the Packers last year, he went off three catches, 73 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. He tragically got hurt in that game, but he showed real ability uh, to get yards after the catch. The route running was there. Ended up getting hurt late in that game, so they placed him on a season-ending IR, then agreed to uh, an injury settlement, and he, uh, I think, ended up landing on another practice squad. But the guy is making plays. He's out there. He's showing out. And as long as that fullback position remains open, he could sneak onto this roster. I would like to keep him around at minimum on the practice squad, but I like what I'm hearing about Matt Bushman right now. I think he's a player uh, to monitor moving forward. Okay, we go to some Chiefs OTA losers now. With winners, there's always losers. Uh, more positive than negative, though. Nazi Johnson, uh, the second-year quarterback. He uh, was on the losing end of that deep ball from uh, Patrick Mahomes to Justin Ross. I mean, if you watch the clip, he just gets beat pretty bad. I mean, he's he's beat by a couple of yards, and that's uh, not a great sign. Uh, it could be a great sign for Justin Ross, but not for Nazi Johnson. And what's already a really loaded and young uh, quarterback room. I mean, it's already going to be an uphill battle for him to find playing time in this secondary with Trent McDuffie, Josh Williams, Legereus Sneed, Jalen Watson. I mean, on paper, he is CB5 at best. The Chiefs also drafted Nick Jones this year. They have DiCaprio Boodle. Like, where does he fit Nazi Johnson right now? What he does have going for him is he was a good special teamer a year ago. So if he continues to make plays in that area, he's going to have a spot on this roster. But what if Nick Jones can do that? And what if Nick Jones shows a little bit more in coverage? That could spell trouble for Johnson. So again, it's early. It's OTAs. We're not making uh, final roster decisions here in the month of June. But uh, something to monitor as we uh, progress throughout the offseason. Now subscribe to the Chiefs Report if you want daily coverage here on YouTube. That's what we provide. OTA's analysis will continue to bring you uh, the latest happenings uh, over there. Latest Chiefs rumors as well. Live shows every Monday, so if you want live interaction, live Q&A time, we uh, do that as well. Help us reach 43,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button, and uh, we will continue uh, to plug out daily videos. A couple more OTA losers here. Blake Bell, uh, the veteran tight end, uh, was not at OTAs this week. And again, I don't think that's a huge loss for him. But with Matt Bushman playing the way he is, Blake Bell's probably going to have to earn a roster spot. I don't think it'll be given because if Jody Fortson uh, finds some consistency, I'm pr I feel pretty good about him being the third tight end with Kelsey and Gray as your top two. Uh, if Matt Bushman uh, continues to show out, he could beat out Blake Bell. And if they only carry four tight ends, Blake Bell uh, could be on the chopping block. Uh, you know, the Chiefs are going to have to make tough decisions once we get into the month of August and September. Uh, for now, I would give the edge to Blake Bell because he's been here. He's been a factor uh, on this football team in a couple of different stints. But he's getting older, and if they think Bushman could be a piece here for a few years, then they could opt to go with the younger guy. So what do you guys think? If you had to pick one, right now who you picking type bb for blake bell mb for matt bushman let us know in the comments section below now guys it's starting to warm up it's starting to heat up and i know a lot of you are going to attend training camp well get yourself some gear we got this shirt shorts combo for 40 percent off at chatsports.com slash chiefs combo uh really good deal usually it's 60 bucks for this shirt and shorts right now it's 35.99 go check it out today 40 percent off link in the comments into the description some chiefs gear for you guys this summer as it starts to warm up outside okay one more this is a bit of a curveball tyler boyd you're like how is he a chiefs ota loser well, he's just a loser during the second week of Chiefs OTAs. Uh, that's what I'm going with here. Tyler Boyd uh, thought he was being clever, I guess, here. Uh, he was asked about the Bengals signing Orlando Brown from Kansas City because obviously uh, the Bengals and Chiefs uh, have to get through one another uh, to get to where they want to go, Super Bowl, et cetera. Uh, he says, you know, we have a nice little rivalry with the Chiefs, and to see him come over, you know, it's like, yeah, we won up y'all. That's such a loser comment to me. It's like, okay, you signed a player that the Chiefs let go. The Chiefs, it, there were, it's not like there was a bidding war and the Chiefs tried to bring him back. They offered him six years and $139 million last offseason. He signed for four years and $64 million this offseason. 
What does that tell you, Tyler Boyd? That tells you that the Chiefs a year later came to the conclusion that we don't want to keep Orlando Brown. They didn't even franchise tag him a second time. Look, I like Orlando Brown. Seems like a good dude. Decent player for the Chiefs. I got no problem with him going to Cincinnati, but the reality is he did not live up to expectations after they traded for him. He was solid. They, they, they expected him to be a 10-year left tackle, and the Chiefs didn't view him that way, which is why they let him go. It's a loser comment from Boyd. He'll be a decent player for them, but to act like that was some huge victory when the Chiefs literally let him go uh, just does not make sense. Like, if I hand producer Coop $20 here, just, just handed it to him, he grabbed it, uh, he did not take that from me. I gave it to him. That is, that, that, that's basically uh, what happened here. Now, they didn't give him to the Bengals, but they gave him to the rest of the league. Like, hey, you guys can come get him because we're not re-signing him. We're not even franchise tagging him. That was the attitude that Brett Veach and company had. So uh, good luck to Tyler Boyd uh, and the Bengals this year. Obviously, uh, it is uh, it is a fun little rivalry. I think that's something we can agree on. Who's the Chiefs' biggest rival right now? It got me thinking it's a tough question, right? Because historically, it would be one of the AFC West teams, maybe Denver, uh, but – the Chiefs have been so dominant in the division. I do think it's Buffalo or Cincinnati, and I would say it's probably Cincinnati right now. Like, if I had to pick one team who's the biggest Chiefs rival right now, it's not the Chargers. Uh, that is uh, that is not the case. Uh, but uh, I think it's Cincinnati. I really do. Let me know what you guys think. Curious to see what your answers are. All right, that's it. We're done. Enjoy your weekend. We'll have more videos to come here on the Chiefs Report. I'm signing off. My name's Harrison Graham. See you guys next time.